So welcome everyone to the latest in our series on tips from the professionals on dealing with isolation. I'm here with Mike Lebecki, a National Geographic Explorer, to talk about some of his experiences. So Mike, could you please tell us about yourself, please? Well, um, I, as you mentioned, I get the fancy title of National Geographic Explorer. Really what that means is an obsession, even an addiction to exploring the world's most remote places. And I've been doing that for about 25 years. Um, but I think the best thing to sum me up is I'm a dedicated father who is also trying to show his daughter the world as well and how to make the world a better place. Thanks, Mike. And what's the hardest thing you've ever done? Um, I would say mathematically, technically, the solo expedition. So going alone to climb big walls in Antarctica or Greenland in these very remote places, being 100% self-sufficient, um, having a big medical kit, repair kit, preparation, planning, uh, just being out there and surviving is one of the most difficult things for sure. Is there any one expedition that stands out over the others, do you think? Yeah, I'd say a solo expedition to Afghanistan um, on my first solo trip there, going there for a couple months. You can probably imagine there's some political challenges, but the climbing challenges. But the so going solo is, is definitely the most difficult challenges I've experienced. And just leading on from that, what, what's the longest period you've spent in isolation and how did you cope? Longest period in isolation is about uh, two and a half months, wow. and that's by myself in Antarctica. So imagine not only the isolation and the conversations with me, myself, and I, and all the other characters up there, <laughs> but not having a shower for two and a half months is quite interesting. <laughs> um, what were you doing during that time? I was out exploring a new place. Uh, and then one of the things that I specialize in is big wall climbing and doing that solo. Uh, so spending weeks at a time living on the biggest, you know, rock faces in the, on the world. Wow. So how did you cope with the isolation for that length of, length of time? You know, for me, coping with isolation really has a lot. And, you know, you can easily use the word meditation, but it's focusing on breathing. It's staying very well hydrated. Um, eating really clean and healthy food. But most importantly, aside from that to stay alive, is staying in motion. So I believe we're all energy and energy needs to stay in motion to be healthy. So it's staying busy and it's staying focused and it's having something to do um, out in the field, especially. And even in these times of, of social distancing and isolation, so, so, so important, all of these things, breathing, hydration, eating healthy, but staying in motion, staying busy, staying active is absolutely key. And is the breathing through through meditation or, or just different exercises through the day? Not necessarily meditation for breathing, but taking taking deep breaths, feel, feeling your body take in that beautiful air and oxygen. And, you know, think about it this way. You, you take breathing, hydration or eating. Without breath, we're going to die really quick. And next you have hydration. If you don't hydrate, you're going to die, you know, days after food, days down the line. So breathing is really, really important mentally, physically, spiritually, and really focusing on breathing meditation. It's, it's, and of course, right in line is hydration, staying really well hydrated. And how do you manage your food stores then on those long solo climbs? You know, after so many years of doing it, every single trip to this day, and I will always continue to, but learning, I'm always learning something. So I've done a little over 85 major expeditions, and I'm also an old mathematics nerd and physics nerd. So these are like big equations, and you really plan out the food, the, the supplies, the planning and preparation of these. So you just, you make sure you take a lot of food and you never have to worry about running out of food. And were there, were there any other tips? I mean, there, there are three great ones you've covered there. Was there anything else to add about dealing with isolation? You know, I like to go back to a lot of the things that my grandmother taught myself and my brothers growing up. She was really uh, focused on telling us to live in the now, to be in the present. Mm -hmm. um, she was really, really heavy on gratitude and just being grateful for everything that we have, being grateful to just to have a home and food, family and those we love. But she said, there are three things you need for a happy, healthy life. 
And um, I really like those and that's basically those you love having something to do and having something to look forward to. So those three things are, have always stuck with me from my wonderful grandmother. And I think, uh, you know, having those in our life in the front wall of our mind every day is a good reminder just to be grateful and, and having those we love and staying busy, something to do and having something to look forward to. Those, those bring a lot of joy to me. And it's a great point. You know, when, I guess when, when times are hard like this, it's good just to focus on some of those simple things like that. Um, that's great. And was there anything else you'd like to add at all? You know, uh, not really. If I was going to throw a plug out, I'd, I'd like to give a shout out to my daughter. Mm -hmm. um, she started a 501c3 nonprofit organization several years ago, and that's the joyfund.org. It's J-O-Y-F-U-N-D dot O-R-G. And um, as a dad, I'm a very proud father. My daughter is really trying to make the world a better place and change the world. And that's kind of been uh, the main thing we've been doing the last several years is what can we do to make the world a better place? Not only in these times of, um, you know, these fascinating mayhemish times, but um, what can we do every day to make the world a better place in any way? And I think if we all ask ourselves that question, it's, it's really powerful and important. That's great. Thanks, Mike. I really appreciate your time. Thanks again for today. Yeah. Hey, thanks for having me. And um, yeah, I appreciate you spreading the word of gratitude and the words of my grandmother. Thank you. Thanks again.